After the overall positive reception to Charles Fusion back in 2014, the 2.5D motorcycling franchise now makes its return five years later. And having no prior experience with Charles games personally, I was naturally very interested to see what all the fuss was about. On the whole, Charles Rising was able to demonstrate why so many people enjoy the series, though not without a few pickups along the way. The most important thing to note right out the gate is that this game is quite simply very fun to play. Controlling and racing your bike along a wide range of wacky and creatively designed courses set across the globe is incredibly enjoyable and feels very solid. And since this is pretty much the content of the entire game, it was vital that they got this component right, especially considering the fact you'll be replaying tracks multiple times in order to progress. Make no mistake here though, this game can be extremely tough in places. It's definitely one of those skills that's relatively easy to pick up, but very difficult to truly master. But when you finally manage to successfully pull off a certain course or challenge after multiple failed attempts, it's an extremely satisfying experience. The game also looks decent graphically, with the real world based environment such as Alcatraz and the Scottish mountains adding a really nice touch to the experience as you zoom on by. But the soundtrack is somewhat disappointing, looping through a mere handful of generic songs you'll quickly get sick of hearing. Definitely one to put on mute and replace with a good podcast instead. The basic structure of Charles Rising has you completing courses within progressively more difficult and prestigious leagues, with a stadium finals for each one which, upon completion, unlocks the next league for you to work your way through. The overall progression system revolves around collecting experience points, which can be obtained simply by completing tracks in the fastest times, but particularly later on when it really matters, are primarily sourced from the completion of so-called contracts. These contracts consist of specific objectives on certain courses, for instance pulling off 10 backflips and attaining an accumulated wheelie time of 30 seconds, and generally speaking add a new layer to the gameplay, making you approach tracks in new and different ways in order to meet the requirements of each one. However, for me, the XP system itself is really the main issue with the game, effectively forcing you to grind your way to the unlocking of more leagues and head to more tracks, as opposed to simply allowing progression to be based on finishing the courses. This also extends to the training mode, meaning you'll have to sink loads of time in before being able to unlock new training sessions and learn new tricks and skills. I wasn't even able to unlock everything before putting this review together, simply because it would have taken me so long to do so, which I think is a real shame for what should be a much more approachable experience, focused on jumping into new courses and just having some fun with it all. To add insult to injury, we also see the inclusion of what essentially amount to loot boxes, which are unlocked each time you level up and contain three cosmetic items for your biker and bike itself. These are often repeats of ones you'll have already acquired anyway, and if you really want to get anything half unique, you'll have to head to the virtual store to spend in-game points on cutting yourself out. Despite being attainable for free if you're willing to put the hours in, you can also buy acorns with real money that you can use to spend on such cosmetics. These structural elements really tarnish the experience for me, making it feel cheapened and not respecting of the player's time. On a brighter note, the online mode on offer is relatively solid, if a little simplistic, allowing you to pit yourself against a maximum of seven fellow players across three courses in a mini championship, seeing you race to the finish line as quickly as possible. I like that it allows you to play tracks that you are yet to unlock in the single player campaign, meaning you get to have a go at some of the harder ones that the game has to offer without trawling through in single player. I'd like to see the online mode include additional features as time goes on, beyond the traditional racing format, such as specific challenges in a similar way to the contracts, as it does get old a little quickly at the moment and doesn't really provide any incentive to keep on playing. There are a few other features worthy of note, one of which is the local co-op tandem mode. This is actually quite a lot of fun, requiring coordination and teamwork to keep the motorcycle on course and allows a way for local multiplayer to be possible on those tracks with just one lane. The more general local multiplayer mode is similar in fashion to the online offering, just with a reduced number of tracks available. Certainly nothing to write home about, but fun enough. There's also a track creator mode which seems pretty challenging to create anything decent with. I found the interface very unintuitive, but if this is your jam and you have the time to dedicate to it, then there's definitely potential here to create some great content. I tried out some user-made tracks, and they were a little hit and miss in terms of quality, but this is to be expected so early on in the game's life cycle, and I would expect this to drastically improve as time goes on. Additionally, there's a skill games mode which has you pulling off a variety of stunt type tasks, such as one which has you propelling off your bike and scoring baskets, 
and another which tests how far you can get your rider to travel into the distance with the help of multiple explosives. These are somewhat amusing but ultimately short lived and sadly are also subject to the XP system in terms of unlocking new activities when they should clearly just be a fun side component fully available from an early stage of the game. Despite its flaws, at its core, Charles Rising is a highly enjoyable and polished gaming experience, which should keep you coming back for more over and over again, and given that it's at a price point of half what's being charged for AAA titles, I would definitely suggest giving this a shot. It really is pretty good. Ahem. <laughs>